doing these things. So, so for a, a young coach or any coach out there or a parent who's trying to help their child, how do you know when to use an external cue and how do you know when to use an internal, if that's even possible? That that, that, that 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 person's lacking that that that's would be the benefit yeah to this them. is the conversation that coaches should be having and this is this is exactly the right way of of parsing this out how do you know how do you know well i like having a lot of options as a teacher and coach so this is one of the reasons i, I i've taken a ton of lessons and i've traveled to to tons of conferences. And I, I feel like every time I talk to someone who's been doing it too, I learn something and I'm going to learn something from you today because I want to be able to have those options. I'm going to start with external always. I always do. And I, and I do that because I want to respect that the player has something that they don't have to change or learn or, or st I want to see where they are and I would love it. So after someone goes through that period of thinking and then, and then they can, they can produce the skill that, that prefrontal cortex activity actually starts to die down. And so when we become more comfortable with something, our more procedural part of the brain has more, more of that activity. And there's some great fMRI studies on that pre and post learning of where that activity happens in the brain. And there's still so much more to do, but it's it's kind of it's it's kind of a uh, an eye opening thing to see that that when you don't have to think, you, you can do something. Well, you can see where that activity is. Now we know mm -hmm. we know too from from experience and and playing golf with friends that if you ask someone after their best round ever, or maybe your best or my best round. How, what, what were you thinking? And the answer inevitably is almost not a lot. Like it was just happening and P pointing and going point. I call it point and shoot. Point and shoot. Right. And, and in other sports, like I played college lacrosse, I, I, I can think of all the really important plays that happened that, that I wasn't thinking as much. It was more intuitive and it was, it felt like it was in slow motion. And when when we're asking someone to then go back now, by, by the way, Cyan Baylock did a tremendous amount of great research on this on, on, um, she had a study that was published in, in nature, was it science? I think it was science magazine. And it was on kids that were performing math, standardized math tests and why they did really badly. Like why, why do they choke? And although that was a, a like a although her studies were more in the in the psychology domain, they actually applied to motor learning too. So choking is is when you already know how to do something and you mm -hmm. get in your own way. So uh, I was I was thinking too much about how I'm supposed to do it, and I just I pulled myself out of out of my 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 feel and into into my head. Well, that actually lines up with how we learn and how we perform well. So, so, so to, to kind of answer your question, when do you, when do you ask someone to think and when do you ask someone to actually make those adjustments internally? Um, only if I really have to, if they need to, if they need to solve something that they're not solving quickly. I, you know, I, I have an, a couple of students right now and they're all, well, one's a relative beginner and he, if he breaks a hundred, you know, he's, he's happy. And I, I was very happy that after our first lesson, he messaged me back and said, I broke 90 for the first time. So I must be doing something right. Cause he's got a lot going on. So it, 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 I mean, I've got this wide range of stuff. It's like, God, I mean, and it, to me, it's all equal. He needs help in all of it. Cause he's got a lot of speed for a beginner. I mean, he's got the stack now, you know, I got him connected with Sasho and I mean, he, in a guy that plays twice a month, cause he has a newborn. I mean, he's, his swing speeds, 112 miles an hour, just stock. It's, I mean, for, for a stock guy who shoots a hundred, I mean, I think that's pretty good uh, compared to what his potential, I mean, he, he, I could see him really cranking it up, but, um, he, and I've got two other guys right now, two students that when they come to me, you know, they know just enough about golf and with YouTube and social media and they're on there trying to figure this out at home. Cause I, you know, I, and I understand it, it's, it's what they like. Um, they, they have a passion for it. So they want to learn it and, and they're, they're trying to absorb, even though it can get in their way, you know, they, they might gravitate towards something and say, Hey, I was doing this. Like, well, you just completely unraveled what we did last week, but 
what my point is try in, in, in as a coach and understanding what what they need an internal external cue they'll usually have while they're warming up and hitting balls about four or five thoughts in their head and you can just see their mind spinning 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 and if i do this if i do this and they'll even say you know when i do this i seem to hit it good and then the next three balls they do it and they hit it terrible so i'll let them f work themselves through that and then based off just experience watching students for decades that then i'll i'll make a determination okay th they're going to need a external cue or they're going to need an internal cue for the next 20 minutes that we're going to change what that what i think they need changed but i found it that allowing them to 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 go ahead and, and burn through what's in the front of their brain so to speak and then let them finally it wears itself out and then then when they're tired out then they say you you can see what's really happening yeah and that's good especially it's easier to determine what path you're going to take from there it's, yeah that's that's really good that's really good i i call it um i like to let people have what they normally do i like to have I like people to have, let me, how many phrase this? I like to perform non-invasive surgery. So the least amount <laughs> of change that we can do to produce the biggest gains is generally the, the route that I take. So if somebody has a swing that they may not, not like the look of, but it works mostly, we're going to keep it and try to find the one or two things that's going to, that's going to make a big impact as opposed to a wholesale change. Wholesale changes are so expensive in time and in work. So not to mention if you need to hire a coach on that, but they don't always produce what you want them to produce because you have to put so much into it. So for example, if you're, I mean, I think all of us who play golf have made changes over the years, you know, but the question is what are you willing to keep what do you need to change and what's worth the change, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where making a good diagnostic decision, you know, or at least that's where knowing where your shots are, are working and where they're not working is really helpful because that can help guide how you make those changes and what you do to change. Yeah. Well, over the, the last, I would say the last, well, I, it was about,